Hey YouTube, today I'm doing a rear brake change on a 2005 Nissan Altima. You need a 21 millimeter socket on a breaker bar so you could break the lug nuts loose while the car is still on the ground. Now we're only breaking it loose, we're not taking them off. Then we want to head to the front of the vehicle and whatever wheel you're working on in the rear, you want to chuck the opposite front wheel. So if you're working on the rear right wheel, you want to chuck the front left wheel and vice versa. If you're working on the rear left, you want to chuck the front right. Then you want to find the jacking point on the vehicle. Place your jack there. You jack the vehicle up. Wheels off the ground. Put your jack stand. Now you want to find a secure spot for your jack stand. And see if the jack is there. Now for even more safety, what I do, after I take the wheel off, that's the rear wheel off, I take it and I place it under the vehicle. And what I do, I have to finish the smooth side, I have that facing upwards. That way, when you go to slide it under, or pulling it back out, to put it back on the car, you're not scratching your finished surface. Now to break the caliper loose, we need a 14, there we go, 14 millimeter socket. And now the 14 millimeter socket plus driver. I have an a extended uh, driver. We use that to break the caliper. Now the caliper has two 14 millimeter bolts. A top one and a bottom one. Now the top one is easy to get out. The bottom one, you may have some difficulties because of that um, that bar. Now you could try to get the bottom one with a 14 millimeter box end wrench. Get that on there and you crack it. And you get that off. Now, sometimes these are on so tight, depends on who worked on the car last, and over tighten them, let me try to get a better angle, that your box end won't work. You have to use a ratchet and a socket. Now just to show you what I mean, mine wasn't hard, but to show you what I mean, if you get your socket on, but the driver won't fit. See, you won't get in. Now you could put an extension on, but as you can see, it's not straight. So as you start putting torque on it, it'll slip off either at the socket or the extension is going to slip out. So now another thing that you could do, if you have a second jack, I got a smaller jack, you could place your jack right at the bottom of that steering knuckle Can get you a better reference point okay so here we have our rotor caliper and you come straight down and here you see the bottom of the knuckle right there place your jack you jack it up now after about maybe Two pumps, three pumps maybe. Now you see this is straight. And you could get your ratchet on the end of it. And now you have all that leverage that you could crack this bolt and take it out. Now if you don't have a second jack, you could leave your car on the jack stand. You lower the main jack 
just gently until the car rests on the jack stand then you could use your regular jack and use that to jack it up at this point so you could get to this bottom bolt now you want to leave the jack there leave it elevated so this bottom bolt once you unscrew it and you pull it out it'll pass the bar see that's the lower one and this is the upper one you could always flip your caliper up and do the brakes and not take the upper one out but I, I like cleaning my stuff up so I'll I take both out I try to clean the entire thing and then I put it back on but another way you could do your brakes is take the bottom bolt out flip the caliper up and you use a wire hanger bungee cord you hook it on the caliper and you find another mountain point that you could hook it just to hold it and you got all that room now that you could work on your uh, your brakes now I use a rubber mallet to tap on the uh, the brake pads loosen them up you see that little gap you know it's starting to loosen up and you could try and push them out but they tend to be difficult so what I do I use like a flathead screwdriver and I wedge it on the metal part of the brake pads not the rotor you don't want to touch the rotor at all so I put it on the brake pad I use my rubber mallet and gently tap it both sides and take them out now I'm one handing this thing so I gotta hold the camera in one hand and work with the other so I'm not gonna be able to show me actually using the rubber mallet but you get the idea now, after about 10 seconds I got both of them out that's the old one okay we good now our new brakes comes with everything you need we got the brake pads we have our um, insulation kit which are these we're going to replace these we got a lower and the upper and we have our grease we just want to use a screwdriver pry this out We got one off. We do the same thing on the top. Pry that out. Got both of them off. Now you get a wire brush. Clean that up the best you can. Top and bottom. And then we put our new ones in. Now we take our new one, we want to line it up and snap that in. There we go. Snap one side. We snap both sides in. We do that for the bottom. And we do the same thing for the top. Line it up and we snap it in. Like so. And see now we have the top and the bottom in. Now in the kit, the kit came from Nissan, so it had four pieces of insulation kit in it. 
you want to use the smaller ones for the Ultima or if you're not sure what you could do is you match up the old one you took off and you match that up and you realize that it matches up with the smallest one and you can clearly tell that one is bigger so that's not that's not it now the next step you want to take a little bit of the grease that it, the kit comes with and you just want to put it on the ends of the brake pads see the end right there each end now you just want to put a light coating like I said on the ends on the tips and just lightly coat the slide pins now another thing to keep in mind on these slide pins that holds the caliper to the caliper bracket remember there's a upper bolt and a lower right here now the lower one is just a, a shaft straight through and the upper one actually let me try to get in close here the upper one actually has a rubber boot at, on the tip of it so this is the upper you got a rubber boot at the tip the lower does not have that rubber boot so that's how you tell the difference in most cases you're not gonna take them off you are really just gonna remove the lower one swing the caliper bracket up and leave the upper one in now putting the brake pads back in the one with the it's gonna be four two on each side if you notice two of them have that little pin it's actually a, a, a worn out worn out brake indicator so as your brake gets to once it gets below this point then this piece touches the rotor and it scrapes against it and you start hearing that noise that's indicating that your brakes it's time to change your brakes now when you install them you want to install it with this with this uh, metal tab that warning indicator you want to have it at the bottom now remember again I'm doing this with one hand so bear with me you want to have it at the bottom slide that in and it should look like that top bottom so it's at the bottom and it's on the in it's to the inside of the vehicle not on the outside so the pin the warning indicator is on the inside inside bottom and then the one without the indicator is on the outside come on don't fall okay here we go so that goes on the outside so you should look like that when you're done and no gaps see no gaps and your pads are curved so that way you could tell you put them uh, you're putting them on on the right side it's gonna curve with the rotor so you should have a nice curved look and that's it everything else is the reverse you take your caliper put your caliper back on and you button everything back up now another thing I put the top bolt back in the caliper see top bolt caliper 
and generally if you're going to change your brakes it's like that so you take the bottom bolt out leave the top bolt in and you swing your caliper up and like I said you hook maybe a wire hanger a bungee cord put some here and you hook it on the shocks or just hook it someplace that is going to hold it upwards now to put well, once you put your new brakes on you have to push this piston back in is a few ways you could do it if you're Hercules you could use your thumb and you could push it back in uh, if not then they have a tool for this which is this tool now real quick how this tool works you wanna shorten it as much as possible this is the end that pushes the piston back in and once you have this up now again bear, bear with me one hand working here you could see how the piston give you an overall view of the piston you want to put this on the piston likes so, on the caliper like so and you want to start screwing it in as if you're tightening it and try to get you a better angle okay and what this does it pushes against the piston okay see now I have it touching pushes against the piston and as you tighten it this push the piston inwards while the back plate is creating the tension on it to help push the piston in and once you tighten it enough slowly gently it goes in my battery's dead so bear with me and once it goes in you back it out and your caliper is going to be able to slide right over your new pads and you tighten the upper bolt you put the lower bolt back in remember you still have that jack to give you clearance for the bolt to go straight through and you tighten everything back up you do the opposite of um, taking it off put your wheel back on you torque everything down the specs actually then you put your wheel back on torque that down the spec and you're good to go now please don't forget to like share and subscribe please hit that notification bell that way once I put a video out you guys will get a notification you could watch it please subscribe uh, more subscriptions I get the more video I'll make and it's gonna be the same procedure on the opposite wheel so once again please like please subscribe please share